Hello friends, welcome back to Neil F Academy. In today's session, we are going to discuss the deployment process using runtime fabric, whether it's a appliance model or whether it's a self-managed Kubernetes, you know, flavor. So in both scenarios, the same operator, you know, process you know, is getting used. So it is nothing new in the deployment. Okay, we can use the similar steps which we use for the cloud, which we use for the on premise. Okay, but here we need to do some extra steps. Okay, so before moving to this session, you know, uh, in, in, in detail, I encourage everyone to please subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you get notification to the upcoming you know, <clears throat> video. And if you're really interested in, you know, uh looking for any specific topic let me know in the comment section below okay so let's start with this session okay so you have endpoint studio over here okay so and then once you do your implementation you do the testing part and all that so you know we can we can deploy new applications we can deploy api gateways what we do nothing but your api proxies okay so for all steps are same okay so once you are done with here, you will build a jar. Okay, so your jar is ready over here. So let's say your jar is let's say you know a dot jar. Okay, so your jar is ready over here. Now what you want to do? You want to deploy this jar to your runtime fabric. So if you go via runtime manager, so definitely you can use you know you know manual process. You can use this ESP pipeline. You can use the Maven commands from the you know uh, from your command line. So there are different steps. Okay, so let's let's see that. Okay, what all we need. So runtime fabric actually use the <clears throat> archive, which is nothing but your exchange. Okay, to store the all the jobs which are getting used while deploying. So before deploying it to the runtime fabric, that exchange will be used to store this jar file. And this step or this extra step, uh, you know, will help us in runtime fabric for you know <clears throat> rollback step. So in runtime manager, you will see that you know deployment history from the deployment history. So in, in, in runtime manager, I cannot show you right now because I don't have the license. In the runtime, uh, you know. Uh, manager in the runtime fabric section, you will see the deployment history. Okay, so let's say your current deployment creates a problem. You can immediately go back to the latest working, uh, you know, the, or the last working deployment, and you can get the jar from there. And this jar will be stored on exchange. Since this jar is getting stored during you know your deployment process, you need to have exchange contributor role. You need to have exchange contributor. This is the extra part that we're going to discuss. Otherwise, there is nothing new in you know uh, going deep plan. It's like similar to the cloud or an on premise. In on premise, if you put the jar file under your apps folder, okay, apps folder, and in cloud, it will be a completely black box for us. We, we, we don't see where the jar is getting stored and all that, right? But in case of runtime fabric, if you are selecting this option, right? So if you go to runtime manager, you will select the runtime uh, uh, runtime fabric as a target. Okay, one more point here: the runtime fabric won't be coming as it is in the target section. We need to do extra steps. So when you create or configure RTF, okay, unless you add, unless you associate any environment so we need to associate environment with our rtf then only this rtf will be listed down in the target list otherwise it won't if you don't do this this state in your target section you won't be able to see the rtf okay so that we need to do before deploy okay so once you go to the runtime manager it will get deployed to runtime fabric and behind the scene it will do this step also so publishing your jar to your exchange. So this part, you know, it, it does the second step will, will be will be done automatically for you when you use the runtime manager. Okay. Now, second step, if you are using CI CD pipeline, okay, if you are using CI CD and if you are using manual process or bring it from the 
Madam command, okay, from your command line, then we need to first publish. So first, definitely you'll be building the jar. Okay, you'll be building the jar. Then second step, we need to publish this jar to the exchange. If you don't do this, okay, if you don't do this, step, your deployment fails. Okay. So once you do this, then you need to go to the third process. That is, use the you know use the you know uh, either your use the platform API or uh, you know use the you know Maven command from here and then maybe platform API CLI CLI will be handled to use the platform API. Okay. So once your jar is available in the exchange, then your entire fabric will you know will be having the deployment uh, you know correctly. Other it will be. So that's the extra step. We need exchange contributor roles. You need to publish your jar if you are using the manual average or CSL in your CSD pipeline. There has to be extra steps to publish it to the exchange. Okay. So once you do all these things, your deployment is successfully done to the runtime pattern. So that's all from this session. Hope you like it. Okay. Hope you feel it's useful. So Please hit the like button, tell your friends, subscribe the channel if you are not done, and hit the bell icon so you get notified in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. See you in the next video.